As we do gather at this time and in this space this afternoon, I invite you to hear these words of faith and of hope. It is in dying that Christ destroyed our death, and rising Christ restored our life. As in baptism, Janet put on Christ, so now may she be clothed in glory. Friends, we have gathered here at this time and in this space, and we're here to, to praise God. We're here to remember and to celebrate the life of Janet Martin. We are here also to lay hold of our faith and hold on to our confidence that we have in God. For those of you who do not know me, my name is Andy Payton. I'm a pastor at Methodist Temple where Janet was a member of for many, many years. And uh, it's a privilege, it truly was an honor to be one of her pastors the last eight years of, of my life and of her life too. And I, I know what a loss it is that she's gone and I'm truly sorry. And I pray that in these next moments that you would find a sense of comfort and a sense of hope. I pray more than anything else, you'll have a sense of God's presence with us in this space. As we do get started, let's begin with a moment of prayer. Let's, would you pray with me? God, we do come to this space today, and we open ourselves to the gift of your presence with us. And we know, God, that you're ready to hear our prayers even before we're even going to pray them. And I pray for Janet's family. I, I pray for her friends on this day. And I ask that you would remind us all of the, the love that we have from you. We thank, thank you for everyone here. and Each and every voice we hear, we're grateful for on this day. <laughs> Help us to experience your embrace in Christ. Amen. And it's okay to have a kiddo around. <laughs> I, I will say I have a couple kids too, so... I know it's difficult, but on our end, don't worry, it's fine. Um, and I know, I know Janet well enough to know that she would want the kid around here, too, so that's a good thing as well. Um, at this time, I'm going to invite Kathy to come, and she's going to share some thoughts. On behalf of the family, I just want to thank everybody for being here today. All of you are very special to us in one way or the other, and uh, 
Andy, uh, I want to thank him for being here as well. The last several years, I took Janet to Methodist Temple, and she declared Andy her favorite minister ever. <laughs> uh, so I have very brief remarks in three parts. And the first part is a reading from Henry Nowen from a daily meditation. Shortly after Janet was hospitalized at St. Vincent, I opened the meditation book, and this was the meditation that I read. And I felt like it was speaking to me about the situation with Janet. From Henry Nowen. Hi, Remy. <laughs> I am convinced we can choose joy in every moment we decide to respond to an event or person with joy instead of sadness. When we truly believe that God is life and only life, then nothing need have the power to draw us into the sad realm of death. To choose joy does not mean to choose happy feelings or an artificial atmosphere of hilarity, but it does mean the determination to let whatever takes place bring us closer to God in this life. So I just felt like that was somehow a message to me about what we were about to experience. The second one, thing I want to share is two lessons that I learned from Janet. Um, Janet is truly one of my earliest childhood memories. Janet and Mommy Mom in Mommy Mom's Garden. So I learned a ton from Janet over the years, but two things stand out. Uh, the first is her incredibly positive attitude. No matter what happened, Janet saw the glasses half full. Um, I can remember when she had hip replacement surgery. She decided on a Friday that she was going to have it on Monday. And Dr. Deppie didn't quite have that opportunity in his schedule. So it was postponed. And it ended up being exactly six weeks before her class reunion. And she was absolutely certain she was going to go to that without a cane or a walker. So her mental attitude, and with a lot of help from Linda, um, she just said, that's OK. I have exactly the right amount of time to do great rehab and go to the class reunion. And that's exactly what she did. And then uh, when Ronnie was ill for so long, he was right next door. And she said on so many occasions, I am so glad he lives next door because that way I can help him and we can still both stay in our own homes, which was probably important for any number of reasons. Uh, so that was just Janet. And everybody in this room probably has 100 stories like that about her positive attitude. Um, the second lesson that I think we can all learn from her is just the ability to see the best in everybody. No matter what people did, Janet saw the best in them. So sometimes she saw the best in them because she wasn't aware of what was going on right under her nose. <laughs> uh, so if you want examples of that, you need to talk to Amanda and McKinsey after the service. <laughs> Uh, sometimes in spite of people's behavior, uh, when most objective people would not necessarily see positive things happening, um, Janet still only saw the best in people. And this explains Ronnie's elevation to sainthood. <laughs> <laughs> but the good thing about Janet's positive uh, ability to just see the best in people is all of the people in her charge did end up being very special people. And I can't help but to think a big piece of that was because she just embraced them and loved them no matter what. So the third thing I want to share with you before I give the podium back to Andy is a poem that Janet wanted to have shared at her funeral. And so she left this with Becky with the instructions to uh, read it at her funeral. I understand she also left it with Linda, so she wanted to make sure this did not get overlooked. <laughs> so as I read this poem, I want you to hear it in Janet's voice. A limb has fallen from the family tree. I keep hearing a voice that says, grieve not for me. Remember the best times, the laughter, the song the good life I lived while I was strong. Continue my heritage, I'm counting on you. Keep smiling and surely the sun will shine too. My mind is at ease, my soul is at rest, remembering all how I was truly blessed. Continue traditions no matter how small, 
Go on with your life. Don't worry at all. I miss you all dearly, so keep up your chin. Until that day comes, we're together again. So I, my wish for all of us is that as we mourn Janet, we might remember the joy that she brought to each of our lives. Thank you, Kathy. <laughs> Beautifully done. Beautifully done. Our first scripture lesson is the 23rd Psalm, and uh, Jim's going to share it. Thanks. The 23rd Psalm. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil. For thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. And the other passage of scripture I'd like to share is a passage from the Gospel of John, just a few verses from chapter 14. I invite you to hear these words. Jesus said, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God, believe also in me. In my Father's house there are many dwelling places. If it were not so, would I have told you that I go to prepare a place for you? And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you to myself, so that where I am, there you might be also. It's the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Let's pray. God, we do ask that you would help us to be present to you, even as you're here present with us. And I pray that you would take the words of my mouth and the meditations of all of our hearts. That you would work and move in such a way that they would be made to be acceptable in your sight. I ask this in Christ. Amen. We're here to do two things. As I mentioned earlier, we're here to, to remember and give thanks for the life of Janet. And we're here to grab a hold and lay hold of the faith and the confidence we have in God's presence. Janet was quite a soul. Um, <laughs> She was full of life, she was full of confidence, <laughs> and she was truly a, a good, good person. She, of course, grew up here and uh, went to Bossy High School and went on to Evansville College, and she grew up in an incredible time, if you stop and think about it, really. I mean, 90 plus years, and you think of what happened in the last 90 years in our culture and our time and all the transformations that she would have seen. I mean, the automobile would have been developed. Um, would have gone from a party line type of telephone to the regular type of telephone, the one like I had when I was growing up that would you turn on the wall and, and then this cell phone. She would have seen uh, people be able to fly. And then not only that, go to the moon. I, I just think it's incredible to, to imagine what it was like to see the world uh, through her eyes. Not only that, she was absolutely full of life, as I mentioned. Uh, fiercely loyal to her family and fiercely loyal to her friends whether it was the bridge club or the golf club or her friends from Bossy High School or each and every one of her family members says she was fiercely loyal. And I, I, can't, I can't not mention this dog named Hurley. <laughs> <laughs> I never had the privilege of meeting Hurley, but <laughs> Hurley's over there, I guess. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and Hurley was very much important to her. And I'll, I'll say a word about animals. Uh, they do have a way of reflecting God's presence and love to us in, in ways that sometimes we people are not so good at. Uh, they embrace us and accept us when we don't always embrace and accept others very well. And uh, maybe there was something in that pet that did that for her. Um, to the stories that really popped out to me as I listened to her family, 
uh, talk about her a few days ago was the first after she graduated from Evansville College. Um, she did what any of us would, would do. She looked for a job. And of all the places she found a job opening was Elkhart, Indiana. Um, which, if you look at a map of the state of Indiana, it's like as far as way as you get possibly from the city of Evansville. And, and Janet applied for the job there as an elementary teacher. And she got the job, of course. And, and the thing that struck me about the story was after that Janet got the job, she found a family that she had never met before and somehow convinced them that it was okay for her to live with them. And, and, and she lived with this family for two years. And that's powerful. I, that's, that's very powerful, the, the trust that she had in that family and the, the trust that that family had in her is a remarkable miracle that we should lean in and pay attention to in the current world that we live in. That's a miracle. Um, the, the, um, and then the, the other story about Janet was, of course, she landed here in Evansville. She came back and she became a kindergarten teacher and uh, she could play the piano. And she had this way of making every single child in her kindergarten class understand how important and valuable that they were. And the way that she would do that, she would make up songs for all the kids. Like, if you got a haircut and you were in her class, you got a song. <laughs> and if you lost a tooth, you got a song. <laughs> you had a birthday, of course, you got a song. And and the, as the family was telling me about these songs that she sang to the, about these kids, like even as adults, they would remember the song. They would remember that song. And I thought, my word, that's a vocation, if I've ever heard of one, that she's singing potential into the people that God has entrusted into her care, and she saw it that way. I, I believe that she saw it that way. At the time of her death, Janet was a mother, a grandmother, a great grandmother, an aunt, but above all else, she's a Christian, and she was a child of God, and we trust today that she lives on in the heart of God, even as she lives on in the heart of each of us. The second thing we're here to do is to ask ourselves the question, how do we get to the place that Janet's gone, and how do we find our way to the heart of God? And that passage that I read from the Gospel of John, I think, really gives, gives us a pretty clear roadmap of how we get there. The Gospel of John, chapter 14, are, these words are words that you often hear in times like this and days like this. And they're powerful, they're comforting, they're hopeful words. But the story behind John, chapter 14, is that Jesus had just spent three years with his friends. They transformed the world together. Um, by this time in John's Gospel, the disciples would have seen Jesus turn water into wine. They would have seen Jesus forgive people their sin. They would have seen Jesus multiply the bread. They would have seen Jesus later on raise people from the dead. They would have seen Jesus turn the religious world upside down. And hear me when I say that that's a good thing because the religious world needs to be turned upside down from time to time. Praise God he did that. But now he's told the disciples, well, he's gonna be betrayed. He's going to be crucified. He's going to die. So many words and so many ways what Jesus has just done is let the wind out of their sails. And it's into that grief and pain and loss he says the words. Do not let your hearts be troubled. Believe in God. Believe also in me. In God's house there are many dwelling places. Those three things, I think, that's the pathway. You want to know your way to the heart of God? There it is. First, believe in God, which sounds simple enough, but it can be challenging. Sometimes we struggle with our faith, and sometimes it's not easy to believe in God. We've lived through a couple years where it's hard. There's a lot going on in our world. There's the pandemic and there's the divisions that are happening in our world today. And yet, in the midst of it all, the invitation of the gospel is, there's more to this world than what we see. There really is. And we can believe in God. And that God's not just like this idea of something far off in this land, far away, but it's a reality right here and now, and that this God cares for us. 
And that's the invitation. First one, believe in God. But not only that, Jesus says, believe also in me. What makes a person a Christian, I think, is that we believe that God came to us in Jesus. And what makes a person a Christian, I think, is when we try to think of God, we, we can't think of a better way to think of God than in Jesus. I mean, let's be honest. I can't dream up a better way of thinking about God than Jesus. Can you? Is God healing? Yeah. Does God forgive us? Yeah. Does God welcome everyone to the table? Yeah. Is God's life greater than the very forces of death? Yeah. Why do we believe all that? We believe in it because of Jesus. The final thing. There are many dwelling places. When we hear that, we talk, we talk about heaven a lot. The place we go after we die. Another translation even says mansions instead of dwelling places. calls it mansions. And that's true. I mean, when we die, we, we go on in the house of God. We dwell in the house of God. But I'm here to invite you to, to understand something else about that phrase, dwelling places, too. The dwelling places aren't, they aren't things we have to wait for. The dwelling places can start today. We can dwell in God's presence now. Any moment we hear a kid laughing and bringing energy to the room, that's a dwelling place. Any time we see folks forgiving one another and healing a relationship, that's a dwelling place. Any time we see the poor lifted up, that's a dwelling place. And any time we look into our hearts and we hear the, the voice of the steadfast love of God that will never leave us, leave us, that's a dwelling place. The best sermon I ever heard is the shortest sermon I ever heard. Maybe that's why it's my favorite sermon. <laughs> I mean, it's, I, I've, I've told this story over the years over and in because it just was so powerful to me. It was given by Archbishop Desmond Tutu. Um, a group of us pastors were on a trip to South Africa a few years back, and we ended up going to the cathedral in Cape Town, South Africa, where Desmond Tutu was the pastor during the apartheid years. And it happened to be his birthday. And then he wanted to come there, and he wanted to go worship and pray on his birthday, but he was really sick. If you, if you knew anything about the end of, towards the end of his life, he had pancreatic cancer. He was very, very sick and very painful for him. And anyway, he wanted to worship anyway. And so everyone gathered. The media was there. Everyone was there. Desmond Tutu was going to have worship. So there we were. There we were. And uh, when he entered the room, it was like God came in the room with him. I, I can't really put words to it. It's a palpable type of thing. Like, you thought, this is a holy man. This is a very, very holy person that did some very, very good things. And then uh, we went through the worship service, and it came time for his sermon, his homily. And he had to, they had to help him up. He couldn't even stand up. And then he kind of limped over to the altar, and he leaned up against the altar. And then he spoke. He said, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here today on my birthday. He broke down and began to cry. And after he gathered himself, he looked out at us and he says, said, I just hope that you find the light and the joy of God's presence within you. And he went and sat down. Well, if Janet was here today, I think she'd probably say something kind of like that. Thank you, thank you, thank you for gathering here as my family and all my friends, it was an important day. She, she would probably say something like, I just hope you find the aliveness of God's presence within you. And so my invitation to you on this evening as we say goodbye and give thanks to her life, for her life, is to do the three things Jesus said. Believe in God. Believe also in Jesus. And understand that the dwelling places, well, they can start today.
And so with this faith in mind, I am going to open it up for a time of, of sharing. I was supposed to warn you that you were going to be able to share earlier. You're going to have to forgive me because I forgot to say that, and I just now remembered that. But I am going to open it up for a time of sharing. And what this time is, is a time to just give thanks and share words of gratitude. In a sense, it's like a time of prayer. You're giving thanks for the things that she did and said, um, but even as you do that, you're, you're giving thanks to God for giving Janet to you too. And so if you'd like to share, um, it seems like a pretty intimate setting, just raise your hand, I'll acknowledge you, and then you can just stand and, and share whatever it is you're grateful for. <clears throat> and then at the end of that time, I'll close this out with a, a brief, brief, brief prayer. So I think we have one sh person ready to share. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe not. Sorry. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> she was a Cardinals fan, apparently. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's a good thing in my book. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Anyone else? We can't talk Okay. I, uh, as the uh, Rick said, eldest grandchild, I'll speak for all three of us sitting up here. Um, I, I was going to tell you guys about the last time I saw my, my grandmother, and it was in the hospital about, what, two weeks ago? When did we, when we all come up? Uh, we were very fortunate, the three of us, that we all got to go to the hospital and have a moment where we saw our grandmother, and we got to spend a few minutes alone and just say what, whatever it is we wanted to say. Um, I, once mom left the room and I had a moment to sit there and talk to her, I just told her, uh, yeah, I just kind of monologued for like 10 minutes because she was laying there in the bed and telling her that she was the best grandmother ever and talked about all these memories that I had of, of playing in her room or like playing in her house and out in the backyard. And I knew if I quit talking that I'd start crying, so I just kept talking and talking and talking and telling her stuff. Um, you know, I, I told her that Rick and Mackenzie had tattoos. And they uh, <laughs> yeah, that's an inside joke, we'll tell you later. But uh, um, anyway, it, it was, the, and, and Ricky McKenzie know what I'm talking about when I say this. It was very upsetting to see my grandmother like that because I'd never seen someone that I was so close to in that end of life condition. And so I, you know, mom and I were, I shared many crying hugs as, as I was leaving. And uh, as upset as I was, there was an odd peace when I left the hospital about, uh, that I was at peace with the fact that that was probably the last time I'd seen my grandmother alive. And I really couldn't figure out why I felt that way. The, the, the peacefulness, that part of it was upset, but the, also this peaceful part, I, I couldn't really understand. So I, I thought about it as I was driving home. And I've got, if you know where I live, I live in Kentucky, I've got a little over a two hour drive. If you've ever had the pleasure of driving the Western Kentucky Parkway, it feels like about 14 hours. So I had plenty of time to think to myself. And, and I was able to, to put my finger on it during that drive, that seeing her laying like that, just resting, not talking to anybody, she was in that condition because her work is done. And I, like I said, I had this long drive, so I was able to explore that thought of her work being done a little deeper. And it, it's true. When I look at, at my mother, her, her daughter, she's still married to my father, they're, they're in a great place in life. Myself, Rick, and Mackenzie, her grandchildren, have all graduated from college. We're all working in the career field that, that we chose, and, and we're all happy with where our lives are going, and we're all on, on a path to success. Her great-grandchildren, like, like Remy back here, who's been so entertaining. Uh, Remy, my son Sebastian, my other son Benjamin, who's off doing something. I don't know where he is, but he's, he's fine. Anyway, he is, they are growing up in stable homes because of the examples of the stable homes that they saw growing up. And so all of this cycle of success in large part has to do with the work that she did while she was here and all the example that she set for us. And that cycle of success is going to continue for generations and long after she's gone because of the work that she did and how much she cared about us and how much she did for us. And so I, I couldn't thank her enough for that, but it did that I 
figured out that that peaceful feeling was coming from the fact that grandma can pass on knowing that her work here is truly done. And she did a great job. And that's it. Hmm. How about I pray? Let's pray. God, we do thank you for the life of Janet Martin. And we, we gather this day and we ask that you would raise her up with all of your people. And we ask that you would continue to raise us up into a new life in your presence. God of life, we're thankful for the many gifts that you've given us, for memories and moments and for the, the gift of an example to live into. We're grateful for our friends and our family. But above all, we're grateful for Jesus, who died our death and rose for our sake and lives uh, to pray with us now that prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This time I invite Jordan to come, and he's going to close us with amazing grace. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved a wretch like me. I once was lost, but now I'm found Was blind But now I see When we've been there Ten thousand years Bright shining as the sun we've no less days to sing God's praise than when we first be Thank you, Jordan. And on behalf of Jan's family, thank you for being here today. As we do get ready to, to leave this time in this space, I invite you to receive, um, receive this blessing. May the love of God, the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and the life-giving communion, the eternal hope of the Holy Spirit be with you all this day and always. Amen. Go in peace.